stupid. Okay, so it should be recording. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> cool. So, welcome to the second Food on Our Tables meetup. And thanks again for joining. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but I sent you a PDF with the people who are on this call and a couple of them couldn't join us. So for example, Adi from Karma Food just messaged me saying that um, he's stuck in the kitchen because uh, they just started doing deliveries. Uh, another um, friend of mine just said from Booker, I said that she can't, uh, she can't come either because she's also stuck in the kitchen doing, <laughs> preparing deliveries. Um, but anyway, I thought that PDF would be useful for you all to be able to connect with, uh, with each other, follow each other, etc., etc. Because my purpose is, you know, building a community. Um, so I thought we would structure this call in basically three main parts. So I thought we would start with um, just, you know, a short introduction. Um, let's try to keep this short just so that we can make the most out of the brainstorming session. Um, so obviously brainstorming session is the uh, second thing. Um, my uh, thinking was let's talk about the problems that we are facing at the moment, the problems that may arise at a future uh, stage, and let's try to vote on those and select the ones that seem the, to be the most meaningful and relevant and uh, follow that up with a couple of um, idea generation workshops and basically try to come up with creative solutions. And at the end of this, uh, I was just thinking we could have an open discussion to see what would be valuable for all of you, for all of us, how, you know, what kind of resources we need, um, what kind of people do we need, what kind of support, et cetera, et cetera. So if this all sounds good to you, we can start uh, with the short presentations. <clears throat> Everyone fine with that? Good. Cool, yeah. okay. So um, I'll just start. So I'm Iwana, I run the uh, blog Berries and Spies. Um, and it's a space where I feature inspiring people from the industry. I geek out about food science, food history, and more than that. I write uh, business articles geared towards creating memorable customer experiences, being more sustainable and more people-oriented. And uh, now I'll just take the order in which you appear on my screen. So Florian, you're the first one. So if you would like to introduce yourself. Yeah, hi. I'm Flo, I'm a natural winemaker from um, a region called Weinviertel, northwest of Vienna. And uh, the last days we started a little project called Drinking Against Sinking. Um, it's a project where uh, winemakers try to help the community, especially the retailers, the distributors and the restaurants. So we sell wine for uh, 20 bucks a bottle. The wine keeper, uh, the wine producer keeps as much as he thinks that he should keep for himself and gives the rest of the money away. And uh, the second thing we do, or some of us do, we uh, give wine for free to our um, retailers uh, so that they can keep all the money uh, from the wine they sell. Um, yeah, to, to, to make it through the next not so nice days. That's it. Cool, Claire. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm basically here kind of representing our natural wine shop in based in Vienna. So it's uh, Vinifero, I mean, I mean, Florian knows and yeah, but anyway. And um, so we are still allowed to uh, open the shop because it counts as uh, Agrarhandel here in Austria. And uh, but of course, we're not allowed to do um, any tastings anymore. Um, so, and we just started to build up uh, an online shop and it's so far working quite good and we hope to launch this very soon. So maybe this week, maybe at the beginning of the next week. That's how the situation is at the moment. <laughs> cool, Gabi. She's actually Hi. my... <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm actually, I'm Gabriela and I'm actually her mother, uh, but I'm also, uh, uh, I have a company in the event industry and uh, we were definitely very, very badly hit because in, I am in Romania and uh, the events were forbidden, all sorts of events, so my business is zero now. 
uh, and I am trying, of course, to support Iwana. I'm a big fan of hers. Uh, I am trying to support the small uh, uh, community, the small businesses, and uh, I'm also to to find something for my people. I have a lot lots of employees with whom I ha want to 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 keep and uh, uh, try to find a solution to survive until uh everything will pass and we can start our activity thank you and you hi um i run two coffee shops and a cocktail bar called the parfumerie wolfgang coffee and dodo coffee i have a catering company and we do consultings as well and yeah we have no business so far so we do delivery we also deliver some natural wine from vino nudo because it's our direct neighbor plus spirits from a small spirit shop. It's a friend of ours who has a single malt shop and our cocktail delivery and yeah, plus coffee delivery. And that's how we try to get along. It's very interesting because uh, they basically got together and they're doing these joint deliveries. So I thought that was a very inspiring idea. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, right. that's about it. Great. Um, okay, so we can, uh, we can uh, move on to the, well, the brainstorming session, uh, whenever anyone else will be joining, I'm not entirely sure where, uh, where they all are, but uh, they might join at a later point. So let's, let's try thinking about what the problems are. I mean, obviously, we all know that um, cash flow is a problem. Uh, we also know that you know, based on the city you're in, the country you're in, there are different government measures. And um, one of the conclusions from the first um, meetup we had last week was that it is quite often hard to figure out exactly what the next steps are because it's not communicated in the most clear way. And I understood that that's the case in Romania and I understood that it's relatively similar in Austria as well, that the government is helping, but it's not always exactly clear what you have to do when, and that businesses still have to um, pay for their employees and so on for the first couple of months. So aside from that, let's, uh, let's think about what other problems are there. Um, what problems are we having right now? And what problems will we be having once this is over? Aside from the cash flow. <laughs> Maybe let's, let's try to unpack the cash flow bit. Uh, I can just speak from my case, or in my case. Um, the problem we are going to have when this is over is that high season is done for us. So we lost two very important months in the bar as we have no outside area. So we always close in August anyway, um, which what we would need is um, less restrictions when it comes to having outside bars or outdoor bars or events or they need to loosen a few laws when it comes to having an outside area garden. That's what I consider as a big problem plus the cash flow we get from the industry will also be less or even gone. For example we have deals with Campari and they are not able to pay any of their deals like they cannot renew any deals so far that's the problem we uh we have so far and that will come along after this is done so we have no real boost after it and many bars and restaurants will have the same problem due to the uh due to the location of their bars restaurants and whatever it is yeah. I, I was also thinking uh just to add another an extra point would be um well mental health because i think um as business owners you're quite worried about yourself about your business and about your employees so i think <coughs> that's um also something that we could add to the list yeah for that we have alcohol so <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe alcoholism <laughs> will be a problem. Keeps the, keeps the, health, the mental health going. Um, no, I think I think um, that's true. What you said. Um, the one thing is the crisis. Now we have to 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 look how we get through this. But the the, the biggest problem probably will be 
um, how how to restart your business, how to get everything going um, when the crisis is over, and to 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 look what happened after the storm. The first question is who will be there, because um, it won't be sure that everybody we we hope to see back and and we love and we support is back in business. So that's that's, that's the first thing and. Um, the second thing I think what we can do after after the storm is over is we, we have now to be very clear that the months after this will be very hard because um, there is the, the, most people run out of money even our, our, our clients and, and customers run out of money so they won't they, they lost their jobs probably or many of them will lose their jobs so um, this this push like uh, many and many many journalists now say that they compare it to the crisis from 2008 and 9 that was different because uh, it was a, mainly a problem of, of the banks and it was a, a problem of, um, um, of, of of a psychic problem but uh, now it's 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 that this this push after the crisis this will not be there and um, I think that the, the most important thing is that we now understand that this will not happen, that the start will be very slow, and uh, now to, to, to prepare for this. And the, 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 the tricky thing is that we have, um, what we have to tell our, our customers now is, please <laughs> spend money now that we can survive, and when the storm is over, please also try to spend as lot as money as you can in buying business, for example, um, to, to get things uh, up again and back again, that they work. That's, I think, this is very difficult. But um, this, this, is, uh, this should be on our focus. Yeah, absolutely. Anyone? So, I mean, we are not that hard hidden uh, hidden at the moment from this um, shutdown because we are still allowed to be open and since we are offering these deliveries so it's somehow it's working but um, of course we lost the um, we basically lost the the restaurants i mean they are in a much more worse situation than we are but um so this is also what florian said so we have to see um who of them will open again and how will their business go on in the next month or after the next month and um but meanwhile so um i've seen so many other wine shops also doing collaborations with uh, with some restaurants and uh, doing these delivery things like okay you know preparing some small meals with um with preparing wine but um, the thing is, um, it's. I think it's quite difficult because some of the. I mean, we have some cafes too. So just ordering some small sandwiches and uh, with a bottle of wine. That's a little bit weird, I think. And not so many people are doing it, will doing this. And also, you know, fine dining is not um, ideal for uh, takeaway. So yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's uh, that's an important thing to add to the list as well. Um, so we've got uh, we've actually got Raluca on the line as well. Um, so uh, I'll just uh, Raluca, if you can just quickly introduce yourself. Sure. Hi, Raluca here speaking. Uh, I'm uh, the country manager for Goem Your Romania. This is an international gastronomic guide launched in, in Romania two years ago. Uh, we've launched two guides already for restaurants, one for Romanian wines. And today our activity <laughs> actually um, is split between two key initiatives. One is to support uh, restaurants through this very hard times. Um, and we do it uh, firstly by encouraging people to order from restaurants online and secondly by remaining interest in, interested in chefs and restaurants, following them online, doing their recipes and so on. And our second big uh, initiative is to support delivery of food to some uh, doctors and uh, medical uh, team of, uh, of a hospital dealing with COVID patients in, in Romania. 
and uh, we have in this initiative 25 restaurants alre already on board and we're setting some final details to be able to start the delivery cool thank you just uh just uh i'll, I'll just quickly introduce uh everyone so that you know so let's make it no no worries actually uh, actually, someone else just wrote to me saying that he also thought it was at 7 p.m. So I wonder if I may have uh, com communicated it for him. In my calendar, it was automatically at 7, so I never double checked. I was just carrying on with my other call. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Um, so we've got Florian who um, is a winemaker and he's, a, he's based in Austria and he started this very interesting um, initiative called Drinking Against Sinking. And we, we can get to that a little bit later and dive more in more detail uh, into that. We've got uh, Claire who um, does management and communication at a natural wine store in, uh, in Vienna. And uh, we've got uh, Gabi, who's actually my mom, and she uh, runs uh, an event uh, business, and she's very, also very interested in, you know, how to support local businesses and so on. She's been heavily ordering from, uh, from, from uh, people around Bucharest as well and trying to figure out how she can, uh, she can also do something. And we've got uh, Gilles, who uh, is managing two coffee shops, a bar, and a catering company and who has been working together with a couple of uh, you know neighboring businesses and basically doing joint deliveries around vienna as well i i hope i i did everyone justice with my <laughs> introduction <laughs> um so raluca what we were doing now we were uh, just trying to put together as many ideas as we could that relate to the problems that the industry is facing and that the industry will be facing once this is over. And as I, uh, as I said it in my little intro PDF, uh, was that basically the idea is to list as many of them as we can at this point, try to you know, vote on the ones that seem the hardest, the most relevant, the most important, the most imminent. And um, basically in the next couple of weeks, do a couple of ideation workshops where we can try to come up with some creative solutions around those. So we've talked about, you know, um, for some, uh, for, uh, for example, Jill was saying that for them, this is, you know, high season. And basically when this is over, high season will be done. Um, we talked about, you know, cash flow. We talked about mental health. We talked about um, the fact that it will be quite hard to restart businesses. Who will be there? who will be willing to spend money because that's a big question at the moment. And I think even now people are quite reluctant to spend money on deliveries. Uh, one other thing that I was going to add, and I've heard it for, from a, quite a lot of people and even quite a lot of young people that they were reluctant to order because they don't always know who's handling the stuff. And you know, if the if they come through a delivery service, will that be handled correctly, et cetera, et cetera? So I think quite a lot of people fear that, and it's I think it's something that's spreading. If I don't want to order, and I'm talking to another friend, and I'm telling them, oh yeah, you know what, I'm not ordering, then that person might also become a little bit more reluctant. And actually, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you, Gilles, how how has it been going for you uh, in terms of like the uh, orders and so on? Uh, I've been pretty good, although we sell way more coffee than cocktails, and the margin is way smaller because we mm -hmm. only sell whole or grinded beans. But the first wave we had was, I mean, friends and family who ordered a lot and, and regulars. But now it's like through the bank. I'm very happy that all my colleagues from other bars are starting deliveries too. But then again, it's, uh, it's, it's not bad for us. But uh, you lose some customers to other bars too, which is everyday life if you own a bar. Um, but the thing I wanted to add is that we lose, we might lose parts of our staff, with, which will also be a problem for many restaurants and bars or gastronomy because you lose the good barkeepers, the good chefs, because if you're not able to open up, I mean, let's be honest, bars, clubs and everything that is with entertainment will be the last instant that will reopen again. 
as no one really basically it's no basic need to go to a bar and get drunk for many people <laughs> um so we are struggling a bit that we as we had to fire our staff we didn't have the cash to keep keep them in the company so we try what we try to do is do as many deliveries as possible and then see if we can get few guys few hours back so at least they come at their normal wage we give the tip to our staff so we try to keep them that way uh, close to us but i am a bit frightened that if other countries like germany switzerland or whoever will be uh, opening up restaurants bars whatever earlier that quite some staff from oh vienna God. or austria might leave oh wow that's another point i think that should not be forgotten yeah that's a that's actually a super interesting point and i didn't even think of that i i thought because i i recently saw on the guardian that the uk has a massive shortage of uh people to harvest fruits and vegetables and that they had a a, a big problem because those workers used to come from romania bulgaria and th those parts of eastern europe and uh they, they were thinking like what can we do and actually i listened to a podcast earlier uh that was saying that they're trying to mobilize students and uh and uh, those who, you know, whose universities are closed and who are fine even with a, with a mi minimum wage to do some of this work, because otherwise mm -hmm. the UK, U UK is fruits and veg will <laughs> rock on the fields, which is a bit sad. Yeah, one of our barkeepers is starting next week in harvesting. <laughs> so in that's how she, yeah, yeah, that's how okay. she kills the time. <laughs> no, not, not a bad way. Yeah, good way. Just yeah, well, that's that's maybe one of the of the good good points of the crisis that all these xenophobe assholes are now shut down because you see how much you need people from other countries to come to work, especially when you do harvest jobs or, or you're in drivers. I have a lot of friends with big companies where they need drivers. Where they come from? They come from Bulgaria. They come from Romania. They come from Czech Republic. Now you see how how important open borders and, and everything is. And I really hope that. Um, a lot of people will learn a little bit, probably not too much, but a little bit, how how everything works and how everything is is linked together. So, I think I think there will be a lot of things. Things. in in our behaviors and uh, and the way you know businesses operate, the way we think. I think we're gonna focus more on consuming locally, and we're gonna be more mindful of what we buy and. Yeah, we will be a lot more mindful because um, yeah. I mean I see it every day. The simple things don't work anymore. But that, that's really funny when you say, "Oh, I need this a part of a tractor, for example." Yeah, something broke. You say, "Oh, normally a problem of two hours." Now, boom, uh, say, "Okay, you phone and then it needs some days." Or, or we had it yesterday. I need I need a uh, run out of um, um, cases, uh, wine cases for uh, DPD for shipping. And normally they, they, they bring you the free, the new cases overnight. So when I, when I call DVD, it's 24 hours later, it's there. Now the same four to seven working days that you get the, the cases. That's wow. But, yeah. Anything else that you are, um, you can think of? I, I also think that it will be tough for people to gain trust again. I mean, there is there are two possible ways. One is that people just gonna run out to the streets and party like hell and enjoy it to the to the fullest, or they will be very distant. That's what I think will also might might cure as a problem because already now when when you see people you know on the street by coincidence or in the supermarket or whatever it's very distant and it's very very strange feeling and i don't know if just by reading the news that everything is that you can go outside and uh because it will not be like that they they, they won't announce at some point okay it is done just go out have a good time all is back to normal it will take months and i guess it will also be hard then again like we have a small cozy bar um 
I don't know if people will enjoy that as much as they did before. And I think it will take some time to get back to normal. I don't know. I mean, if you, wine making, I don't know if you have the same problem. I guess you, you will have it for tastings or in, in, in the wine shop as well, in the natural wine shop. Uh, with honest, tastings. I, I never thought about this till now, but probably, yeah. Probably you're right. It's, it's maybe, maybe for the first few weeks or the first month, it will be a little bit strange, maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but um, when we know one thing about about uh, mankind, we, we forget things very quick. So maybe maybe after two or three months of being a little bit uncomfortable, I think I think things will get in that way. We'll get mm -hmm. quite normal again because. Um, as we've seen after every crisis, we, 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 we return quite quickly into what we call Alltag. So, um, but yeah, there are a lot, a, lot of, a lot of open questions and a lot of, um, um, yeah, we don't know. It, it, it's open. Let's see. In my opinion, people will be very eager to, to meet each other in person because it's our natural way of being. Uh, no matter how, how easy it is to look, to communicate uh, uh, online, but uh, we are basically social beings. So we need to socialize in, uh, in real life. <laughs> and... Uh, Probably a plus will have those uh, who have uh, an outdoor facility like a terrace or something because that would be uh, w would make people much more comfortable to to gather and to keep distance that's open air so it's uh, uh, let's say a bit maybe more comfortably uh, they will will feel more comfortable but uh, uh, meanwhile, maybe m most of the people, at least here in Romania, I expect that the, the, their um, uh, propensity to, to consume will, be, will decrease uh, dramatically and uh, probably they will keep buying uh, stuff and partying at home, uh, starting meeting people in their places and uh, slowly moving out to to go again to restaurants to bars to terraces and so on but it's very difficult now to predict when this will happen yeah the, this is this is a super interesting topic actually and i had i had not thought about the fact that the environment might you know might need to change somewhat to adapt to um to the needs that people will be having and the worries that will, they'll, they'll be having after this. Um, and yeah, I mean, yeah, like you said, Gilles, as well, will, will they like that kind of cozy? Would they prefer terraces? Would, will socializing be different? Uh, Raluca, we can't hear you. Sorry, I'm sorry, right. but I think that that's part of our, of our responsibility now, that we, 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 we think about this and that we start to communicate. Yeah. At, the, at the right point and that we say okay exactly exactly no, no the time for of fear is over i think that that's that a very important thing now that we, we, we everybody had so much fear in the last years i mean think about it we, we, we're fighting terror now since 2001 it's nearly 20 years yeah we are spending billions in fighting against terror and we all want to be secure and safe and look now what hit us yeah, yeah. a virus yeah, boom. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. Yeah, so everybody who thought that he's safe and everybody who tried to build safety zones around himself was totally wrong, because it came from a total different direction. I think one of the things we have to communicate and we have to learn and we have to go on after this crisis is, don't be afraid anymore. It makes no sense because when you think everything is cool, something comes you never expect. And this little thing nobody expects kills nearly the whole economy. And I think that's that's now now everybody says, Ooh, how long will it go? Will I survive? And let's try, let's do our best. But now in the next weeks there has to come this communication process that 
things will get better after it ends, that we have yeah. to do something, that we can't be afraid anymore. Um, and we shouldn't, yeah, I don't, I don't know, we should find a way to, 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 to get out of this, this, this strange situation and, and, and to continue. And I don't know how to, 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 to keep it in words, but it's, um, it's, it's, it's a moment where I say we, we, we all have to, to, to get in action and, 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 and take all the, the, the people with us because um, every, everybody you, you're talking at the moment is like at a funeral. And sorry, this will not be the funeral of mankind. Yeah? We will have some problems. There will get some people very hit by, very hard hit by this, but a little bit more optimism and a little bit um, look to your left and to your right who is there. Uh, ask how can you help, ask how you can support. We will, we will make it. Yeah, for sure. I believe in it. Randuka, I think you, you were saying something and something went wrong with the audio. But can you hear me now? Yeah. So what I was saying is that socializing is a fundamental need and will still be there. It's just going to be new ways of uh, doing it. I think people, yeah. once, uh, not necessarily digitally native, but once they got accustomed more to digital experience, they will try them more often. So I'm thinking about uh, party at home, uh, make your own cocktail, make your own meal by interacting digitally with someone. I think this one is there to stay. Um, going back to cozy bars, I think it will happen again. But what will change is the literacy, if you want, of the customer who's now in the position to ask for uh, are you taking care of, uh, of this facility? Are you using the proper uh, um, equipment to make sure this is safe from a health perspective, for example? So I think that people will simply become a bit more cautious, a bit more demanding, but they will continue. Wait, I think, because we can't hear you again. Okay. <laughs> I think, Florian, there's something from uh, your iPad, I think. From my? Uh, there was some... Uh, Practicing. I think. I also need to get my, my, uh, my laptop as my phone is dying. I'll be back in a minute and I can reconnect from the... Sorry, no worries. From the uh, laptop. Sure. Uh, Raluca, so we heard you until you said that people will become more cautious and uh, more demanding. Yeah, so they will still go out. They will still be socializing with friends. Yeah. It's just that their behavior will be a bit more cautious. And then on the trust side, I think that only those businesses that show now a lot of cooperation and trust will survive. People that recommend each other. I'm closed now, but please buy from this producer or I will be able to deliver. But uh, my neighbors here are also delivering food, so order from them as well. So I think that the lesson is that we can only do it together. together. This comes at a time when we were accustomed that on our own, we could be strong enough. I think nobody is strong enough on their own right now. It, it can't be. We, we need to get out of this together. Yeah, that's a that's a very good point, and it's it's basically also why I thought um, I'd, I'd start this kind of project and get people together and get people from various countries together because I think there's a lot of value in sharing ideas and uh, and ways of working because I think for example in in Romania there's still a big um, a, a big part of the mentality is still quite um, a lot around, oh, if I share that idea, somebody will steal it from me. Rather than, let's share ideas, it's good. If you're gonna be excellent, you're gonna be excellent and succeed. In some, you know, in some businesses that works, in some businesses it's more difficult. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I think, you know, I think it's important to be open and you don't need to, you know, come together necessarily with your direct competitor, although I'm sure that can work as well. Um, but, uh, but find yeah i mean like uh like uh jill was saying that um you know he just got together with his neighbors uh with the businesses that were around uh, around his mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
All right, so we've got woo, we've got a significant list. I will actually do the do that thing that I always do at work, which is sharing my screen. <laughs> it's it's that time. <laughs> so I took notes of everything. I, I'll uh, share them with you all at the end. So what I thought, okay, the comment section can go because I think we've uh, I, I I wrote down enough um, details in here. Um, but what I was thinking we could do is basically let's let's spend a, let's spend a couple of minutes just quickly going through each of these again, and let's try to pick each of us pick the three that are the most important. Okay. The ones that each of us considers to be the most important to picks. Um, so, okay, there's quite a lot. So let's do the first batch. Um, okay, so, yeah, I mean, for some businesses, this, this is the case. I think for others, it's not necessarily... Cash flow is definitely for everybody of the... One of the biggest problems, uh, I think the biggest problem. Mm. Of course. But the, the question is, yeah, I mean, I can, I can add a vote here. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my only reluctance towards the cash flow, uh, towards the cash flow problem is that I think, and, and please, Tell me if you think I'm wrong. I think there's a, quite a lot of initiatives happening that are encouraging people to consume more, but I, I'm sure there can be new ones. There, there can be more awareness and, um, and, and so on. I'm not sure. Say, uh, if, you, if you disagree with me, please say it. <laughs> yeah, but consuming more uh, is uh, somehow in contradiction with the current situation and with what is going to happen i'm all again i'm speaking about uh, about what's happening in romania although the state uh, is uh, supporting somehow the employers and the employees but uh, it won't suffice and uh, uh, the state support uh, is only for the this um, emergency state period, uh, time, and afterwards, who knows? There will be a lot of uh, people who will lose jobs uh, and their income will be extremely low. So it doesn't really go very well with consuming more. Yeah, I, I agree to that because, you know, if you're putting on Kurzarbeit and if you're income has lower a lot so how can you yeah. you know um bring these people to spend more money when they don't have mm -hmm. any money to spend i mean they have maybe credits to, to to pay back and you know then you have to step yeah take a step back and then just spending not so much money on the board, like enjoying life go out spend it for restaurants and you have to you know just pay what's very really urgent for you like rent and um these things yeah i think we we, we also need um also talk about a, a new culture of spending money yeah because um the problem is that everybody everybody is is, is in a mood that when the crisis comes to say oh now let's save money because nobody knows what's going to happen. Uh, what we need, and uh, this is a problem of society, because if you need, uh, at the end, you need a politician or somebody who does it. Stands in front of the microphone, in front of the camera, and tells you, don't save your money. Spend it now. And think about where you spend it. Because that's very important. It's not just spend it. Think about who needs the money. What, what you're going to buy now, where you're going to spend your money. You need yeah. to spend your money now in the small community, communities because the small communities, you're every day at work around where you are and what you see. And if these places die, probably your environment and everything you live in changes. So if you want to stay in this, in this neighborhood, in this community where you are, spend your money there. 
don't buy a new car now because I got to not think Volkswagen will survive and BMW too. But probably not the bar next to you. So spend your money in the bar, go there, or take the delivery now. Whatever, try take to spend the money there and spend as much as you can because that's important. Because if you save now money for a time, nobody knows what will come. That, that's ridiculous. You don't need a money to save it for maybe in half a year where everything you love is gone. What do you do with the money? You don't need it anymore. Yeah, so absolutely. Spend now. That, that's something that is something we have to learn. I, I know that we can't do it now as quick as we want to do because people are not, 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 not they, they didn't learn it like this. Yeah, they learned to, 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 to in, in bad times, save the money. But that's stupid economy if you do it. So, do you guys hear me actually? Yeah, yep. Okay, perfect. Because my, my camera is not working for some reason, but yeah, <laughs> if Don't you it's worry. yeah, we can, we can hear you. Okay. So let's um, let's go back to the voting. So let's let's try to do this. Um, I, I think you raised a very good point. If there's new problems, let's add them because I don't. You know, I want to really make the most out of this and have a list of stuff that's really valuable. Um, so let's. Um, anyone else looking at what we've got on the screen at the moment? What so, would be your? For me, for me, probably. Um, economically and personally, emotionally, the most important thing for me is who will be there. That's, that's, that's by far for me number one. Yeah. Because that okay. defines everything what happens after the storm. So, that's Anyone me, else on, on who will be there? Yeah. Claire, for you too, vote? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. All right. So keep keep track of uh, keep track of your votes because we we said uh, let's do three each. So let's. Uh, all right. Uh, wait, uh, Jill. I think you said one more there. I am here. Yes. All right. Anyone else? Any of these uh, these points here? I would like to put mental health on priority because I think this is here to stay. Um, and it comes, I would combine it with how to develop resilience. I think that mentally we really need to be um, strong. Um, all right. So, but for me, it's the same vote. So how to be more resilient and mental health, it's the same thing. I would put it in one. Right. Cool. Yeah. And then it's a single vote, basically. I yeah. will give. Uh, yeah, yeah. Unless so one one vote, vote from you. Uh -huh. I I will uh, vote for that as well. Anyone else a vote for mental health and resilience? Gabi. Yeah. <laughs> Sold. No, I made it clear we have alcohol for this. So. <laughs> well, hey, guys. Alec. I I I have to apologize. I indeed messed up the schedule because uh, I was thinking in Romanian time and Austrian time and I, I uh, indeed had sent the invite for later and it's my fault. I'm really sorry. It's okay. Uh, that's because we're talking about time, I just want to, to say I have to leave in, in about 15 to 20 minutes. Right. Yeah. Because then it's Same. kids time and I have to feed my kids. and. Yeah. All right, in this case, let's just quickly go through this and we can, if we have a bit of time at the end, we can do a quick introduction, but I would really like to get your, in, your votes uh, before you have to go. Yeah, you, you got my vote. My, for me, who will be there is the absolute number one. You have two more. Two more. Um, and I think, Jill, you also... Uh, of course, of mm -hmm. course, cash flow. Somehow it's. Oh, uh, that was. Oh, yeah, that's. Can I give a give a point of the cash flow? Yeah. And um, yes, and and how to get people to spend money. This uh, I will actually vote for this as well. Yeah. So I have two votes. So Florian, I think you have all your three votes. Yes. And Jill, I think you still have, uh, wait, you have one more or two more? Is, more. is there, I, I don't see it, the problem with um, government and restriction when it comes to organizing events, having outdoor areas and whatever, because that's a very 
tough one in Austria at least if you want to have a rolling bar or something you cannot park everywhere you have to get permission to do whatever event you need so uh, for me governmental restrictions when it comes to hosting events and being spontaneous is very very a very tough one at least in Austria so and that's something for me that needs to be a bit uh, less restricted now mm. so uh, it's a point I would give a vote to what I um I, I think it's a very it's absolutely a very valid point what I am what I thought is we would uh, because basically the idea is to come up with solutions to, with creative solutions that we can kind of implement and government mm -hmm. is less in our hands. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm, Sorry, I'm let not. me let me let me say something about this because mm -hmm. I, this is one thing I learned about this crisis. Now. I'm I'm a membership of uh, the Austrian uh, Wirtschaftskammer, mm -hmm. like everybody who has a business. Mm -hmm. So. Um, because I'm, I'm, I'm as, a, as, a, as a wine startup, let's call it like this, I'm not in the, in the, in the Landwirtschaftskammer, I'm a member of the Wirtschaftskammer. So, uh, till the last, I don't know, three weeks, I didn't really care about this. I was there, I went to some meetings, blah, blah, but I was never really into it. But now I found out what you can do when you participate there and when you have the right people there, I'm, I'm in a very lucky position. I have a fantastic people in the Wirtschaftskammer Hollerbrunn. This is the district where I am. Mm -hmm. And they really, they really take care. And this is incredible what they did for me in the last two weeks. So there is a possibility to do something. And if, uh, if, if, if you have problems and if you know, it's always to, to which people you come. If, you, if you're yeah. in Vienna, I don't know how she is. When he goes to a Richard's mm -hmm. camera there and there are only some idiots sitting there who don't care about him, then you have a problem. But in, in, my, in my fact, I, I really have the, the, the big, big luck that uh, the, the office in, in Hollerbrunn is fantastic with four fantastic people and they really care. So if you, if you, if you have somebody to speak to, to tell him that this and this and this are points, they are important. Um, it's interesting how you see how the people care about this and how they tell to other people and say, think about this because this can help. So uh, maybe it's, it's, it's now the right point that, um, to, to, to talk to these people and say, hey, we, this, is, this always was a problem. This always was shit what we did. But now maybe now the right point is to, to talk about it and now to open and, and to, 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 to reorganize it. Because these people are always, they sit in power and they, they, they can't do something. And not everybody who is sitting in a government office is an idiot. There are some good people. And um, this is something where all of us should now start maybe a little, a little more to, 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 to trust a little bit more in the institutions because there are some, some clever people sitting. Yeah. And if you catch them at the right moment, sometimes you can move really big things. And... I'm say what what I what I um, have seen in the last two three weeks. I must say, wow, chapeau, really great. Okay, th this is this is actually very inspiring and this is very interesting because uh, it, it it it's a new, fresh, and positive perspective compared to, for example, when we had our initial call and uh, and kind of the consensus the consensus was that it's completely out of our hands so actually this this is super interesting and um and i'm tempted to I, I was thinking I, I was thinking like this the most time of my life but um now i've really seen it in, in this crisis that some things and you can get can move some things it's, mm -hmm. it's also with, with drinking against thinking i've seen it that suddenly you get support and suddenly if you never think about it suddenly say oh we help we can do something yeah sure so, but of, of course, it's, it's, it's a tricky situation now, strange days, <laughs> strange days. So sometimes you can move strange things. So maybe now it's the good point when everything is fine again and everything works again. You go to these people and say, hey, let's do this. Probably they say, hey, come on, we have other problems. Yeah. yeah. But now, I think now is really the time. If you want to change something, go to, your, to, to the people who represent you and tell them this would be good. This is something... I think at the moment you can move, maybe not a mountain, but you can move a little bit. Super interesting. Anyone, anyone else for this point? 
you can also vote, vote twice for the same thing. If, I mean, it's a complete democracy here. <laughs> I also go for the business need to work more to get a uh, so I have my here, together. Yes, and I think this and is you also can put my vote vote there as well. Right. <laughs> I'm I'm a believer. It's my idea, so I believe in it. I'm a believer in government measures. In Romania, I wouldn't vote for that because I don't know how fast they can they can actually support. They will be able to support with what they've announced, um, but. But I don't know how long it will take, and I don't know if it's safe for businesses to rely on this. Yeah, yeah. Example yeah. of Austria, I can uh, uh, change that. Oop. Would help producers in a, in the blink of an eye. Uh, you keep uh, disconnecting. No, I'm keep disconnecting. Yeah, for some reason, like uh, when you talk, okay. we can hear you for a bit and then there's okay. a... Okay, I have no idea why. I just have a very old laptop. <laughs> we can hear you now, so let's, uh, let, let's try again. Okay, now I just said that I think laws can change very quick as we just saw it now. So if they change the mm -hmm. law and the laws in Austria were not uh, profitable to all those who have small businesses, so we, we are very screwed. <laughs> Sorry for my language. Um, but then again, they can also change the law. And on the other hand, I think very, very quick um, to yeah, make us uh, at least summertime a bit, bit easier to gain money. So I think changing laws is nothing that is very hard. It can go very quick, as we can see now. So yeah, I hope yeah. the trend stays like this. <laughs> yeah, I think. You have to push a little bit at the moment, and yes. if you push a little bit, and if you say, it's, it's always the problem is, it, but it's everywhere. If you find a person next to you who says, let let's do something, yeah, then everything is easy. If if, if you just meet people who say no, then it's a problem. It's, okay, you, have to be, you, have, you need a little bit of luck. <laughs> we still have a couple of votes left. Uh, I I think so I for for uh, for the community thing, uh, there is somewhere. Uh, do, do, do. I'll be back in a minute. Ah, cooperation and trust. I think this is the one. So I guess I mean these yeah. actually should I should merge them. So I and I will just add because I mean it's ah uh, yeah with working together yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, it was. Uh, uh, easily proven uh, in Romania at least because um, uh, I noticed uh, in, in the event industry uh, there is no uh, there is no um, it, it's a fragmented community and there is no an association a professional association or something to support the industry and it was very difficult to to gather people and uh, uh, to ask for certain measures or for certain support from the government because of this. Uh, industries uh, that have those kind of, uh, that, that cooperate more and that have that kind of uh, organization to represent them, of course, for them was probably easier to, to get some support and to be to be uh, to be listened by the government yeah yeah no i i do reckon unions <laughs> are gonna be a big thing once this is over <laughs> well <laughs> it's not oh. necessarily this <laughs> um alex obviously you you uh, just recently joined but you can see most of these points as i'm uh, as i'm scrolling through claire i think you have a couple of uh of votes as well yeah just uh very quickly because for example who will be there and also for the distrib the point of um for distributors lost of lost restaurants i think this will this is more or less the same i mean it's i this is a point that um is fitting for I think everyone, everybody who has, um, who's working with, you know, other companies. So 
restaurants, distributors. And, um, but I would go just, can you scroll down a little bit? Yeah. It was just, uh, covered as well. Trust. So the education, the, the new education of how to spend the money to show, I mean, this is what people are already doing, you know, having these lists. So where can you get these um, things locally? So, you know, for example, screws or just books and don't go to, Tal you know, not, not ordering online from Talia, for example. So I, it's just still so happening. I mean, there are already a lot of uh, websites and a lot of in initiatives uh, happening, but I think this is still a very important point. Yeah. I, I agree. I think I think education is because people are aware of it, but they don't actually understand the real value. And they're more likely to go for convenience and go down to the supermarket and spend a lot of money, buy three trolleys full of toilet paper and uh, yeah. and bread or whatever. Um, and uh, instead of actually, you know, spending a little bit more time because we all have a bit more time these days and actually researching Oh, options that would you know give you better quality uh, products that would support the local business but it's really about seeing the fact that th this is the point when you actually have time to think about this before I can understand if people would come back from their jobs get home at 6 p.m. or whatever after their commute and they would just want to quickly go down to the supermarket and get whatever they needed or just order some food but now, you know, people have the time to think more mindfully about this. And I agree. I agree that education is uh, very, very important. Um, okay. Yeah. So, and also the, the other point, uh, the other vote will, um, I think we had three ro votes, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the other vote will also go to the, um, the, the point just above. Um, it was the you know how business work together so i think this is a i mean it's a great initiative start um, you know the great i think drinking again singing is a great initiative and i mean um i and i also think that the good point is that uh, these winemakers they are you know they know maybe best who of their um partners are more in need who needs really needs uh, needs that money and um so decided to depending on the local situation. Yeah. Um, Alex, given that, I, I would like to actually run you through all the points and, and we can do this, but given that Florian and Jill will have to run, I think it's very, it would yeah. be very nice for you guys to meet each other because you are activating in the same industry. Um, Jill has a, a bar and two coffee shops. Um, and Florian is a natural winemaker, so um, I, I thought, you know, and Alex uh, basically runs a cocktail bar and a coffee shop in Bucharest. So it's very much, you know, along the same. Uh, and actually, just uh, since, since uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm introducing, let me introduce everyone. So Raluca, um, actually, she's the country manager for Gomio in Romania. And Claire is um, doing management and communications at um, um, a natural wine bar, uh, oh, a natural wine shop where I uh, tend to go pretty much every Friday. Tend to go every Friday. <laughs> so I just, um, Florian, are you still? Excuse me, you have Gabby as well. And yes, of Sorry. course, I'm. Uh, I'm. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, sorry, I lost, I lost track of it. Uh, Gabby is actually my mother. <laughs> and uh, and she, uh, she is in the events business and very interested in how, you know, she can support because she has a couple of people in her team who would, you know, like to do some work these days. But obviously all events have been cancelled. So that, yeah. Um, yeah. What I was going to suggest is, Florian, if you're still with us and if you still have a couple of minutes if you can tell us a bit more about drinking against sinking mm -hmm. let um, me stop sharing my screen for now <laughs> yeah it's 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 it's, it's easy uh, drinking against sinking um, is, a, is a project where um, winemakers um, sell wines um, where every bottle costs at least 20 20 euro 
and um, part of the money the winemaker keeps for himself and hopefully most of the money he spends for uh, other businesses uh, like retailers or restaurants in his community or wherever and um, that was the basic idea nice. because um, to, 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 give, to give your retailers and, um, and your, your, your distributions or restaurants a little bit of cash flow um, that's the idea. Um, the, the second part is that, for example, um, like Popic or myself or some others, we also give wine to our, our distributions and to our retailers for free so um, that they have the, the Drinking Against Thinking wine with the Drinking Against Thinking label in their shop. They can sell it and they can keep all the money for 20 bucks to the bottle. They can keep all the, 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 the money for themselves. So if you send, it's a, it's a very simple, simple, simple mass. But if you if you send to to every every distribution, in my in my case, uh, twenty four to thirty six bottles. So they have somewhere between around five hundred. If they sell everything, five hundred euros a month, just to keep things a little bit more easy, a little bit more comfortable for them, so that it gets. And and that's it. And so we started um, ten days ago, or something. Was it? Was a weekend. Well, I had the idea, and um, I'm very glad that my, my, my brother, who is an IT genius, found also some time to help me with the homepage and um, did all the IT support. And yeah, now we are 46, uh, sorry, 96 winemakers. Wow. Um, a lot of them from, from, um, from, from Czech Republic, from Italy. Um, some from Austria, from Germany, Spain, Slovakia, Slovenia, and so on. So some Romanians are missing. Yeah. And, are you only um, focusing on natural wine? Yeah, yeah we're only, it's only natural and organic. So there was a compromise to say it's, it's only natural and because, you know, the, the aggressions between conventional and, and, yeah. and organic, it's difficult because to be honest, everybody who wants to spend money and wants to help is welcome but then we had some winemakers who said okay if they come i go so i had to decide for my community and to say okay then it's only for natural and organic wineries um that's a compromise i had to do uh, yeah uh, we, we try to 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 keep to, to, to help and that's the most important thing every 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 uh, winery is responsible for itself um, every winery can do it the way it wants to do it, and um, I, I just give the platform and I try to motivate people to help. So yeah, I think it's that's it. Created kind of a circular, you know, created kind of circular economy. I mean, they will yeah. help other but if they and it's a good way to actually show your product. Maybe in these times when you, you know. Yeah, it's, it's 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 kind of a win-win yeah. business because uh, it's 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 a support for the for the for the for the winemakers. And I told every winemaker, if you need the money now because you run out of money, take all the money. But if you can say, I can give half of it, or I can give two yeah. third of it to 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 a restaurant in my in my village, to to my retailer in in somewhere, great, do it. So it's, it's a risk. Every winemaker is responsible for what he does. And I said, it would be nice if everybody uses the, 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 the drinking against sinking label, but that's not a dogma. If you can't do it because you don't want to, 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 to buy now 100 labels, don't do it. Just put a sticker on it or write it by hand. Whatever you want to do, do it. The important thing is that people do something. Not to, to, to have dogmas how they do it. But that's funny because that, now the problem comes. Uh, especially in Austria, <laughs> with a lot of winemakers, we have the problem that if you don't give them a list point for point what they have to do, they get confused. When you tell them, do whatever you think and whatever you can do, just do it, they say, how? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do it. Make something. This is uh, this yeah. it's a little bit difficult for a lot of people. But uh, if, if you look to Czech Republic, what they did, they did a, a second homepage because Milan Nesterek, fantastic guy, he said, I, I also want to, 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 to bring some, some conventional winemakers to the, to the platform to sell because we need the help. And I said, yeah. do it. If you want to do it, do it for Czech Republic. 
they have a special um, homepage. It's now it's called 504 crowns. So this is 20 euros, and there are much more winemakers, and they uh, they really. I don't know how much money they mean, but they have. This is really great because they sell a lot of wines. And Milan started with 25 Magnum bottles. And I think meanwhile, he, he has over three, bottled over 300 Magnum bottles. And they're all sold out now. So yes. that, that's really cool. And you see there are things moving. And if you see how, how they fight in Italy, because it's not easy to get something going now in Italy. But what Lorenzo Fiorin from Tenuta Lamonia did there, to motivate a lot of people and to say, come on, we do it. And sometimes they don't even know how they should bring the, the, the wine from one city to the other, but somehow they manage to do that. That's really cool. And um, yeah, uh, also very nice situation was I was, I was writing to Frank Ellison, one of the most famous natural winemakers in, in the world. And I said, he, I don't know him, I just wrote a, an email to him. Just I tried, I wrote many emails and Two minutes later, Frank wrote there and said, well, cool, let's do it. So after we wrote five or six emails and then, wow, he was, he was, he was on, uh, on board. And that's good. That's how it's you can move something. And um, I hope it helps. Nobody knows if it helps, but we try so. And um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's important that people do something for themselves to, to, to wake up, to get out of this agony and uh, to, to, to tell, if, if you start the morning to saying how terrible things are, you will have a shit day. So you just have to get <laughs> up and say, let's try. That's it. Continue. Yeah, exactly. So ladies and gentlemen, it was fantastic, but now I really have to feed my kids. Go, go. Thank you so much for joining. Really, really great with you. Um, I hope you have a good discussion as well without me. And um, yeah. By the way, this is so now open. Whoever want, would like to stay, whoever would like to, whoever needs to go, it's, yeah, it's completely up yeah. to you. I, think. I really, really enjoyed it. It was a very good hour. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for joining. Look, look at the homepage. Drinking yeah, against thinking. Uh, write me an email if you want. Yeah. If you yeah. know winemakers that want to join, you're welcome. Maybe I'll see right. some of you guys. Would be nice. Cool, you then. Enjoy yourself and get Amen. through the storm. Do we get Thank the you. contacts from everyone afterwards, maybe? So we can ciao, ciao. Yeah. connect. Hi. Hi, Florian. Uh, yes, so actually in the PDF that I sent you, there should be um, the names of all the businesses, but I will, I will make sure to put you all in contact and send you okay. the social links and, and all of that. I just need to get a bit of time to get that done, but I will. Okay. I, will. I, I would also like, I need to leave as uh, my spoiled kids need so so long days and the shops are closing at seven. <laughs> <laughs> so All right. Spargers with so so long days and my wife's after me to get it. So uh, yeah, right. I would uh, love to join next time in any case, yeah. any time if you will do that again. I will definitely let, let, let you know and uh, we'll definitely do that again. And I'm going to check if my camera will work till then. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's so, see you guys and thank you. See you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Yeah. All right. And I will run uh, as well. I'm sorry, my phone is ringing continuously with my uh, <laughs> delivery to hospitals topic. So hopefully we, uh, we have a closure soon and we can uh, yeah. be in operations. Um, please feel free to share my contact as well and if uh, anyone thinks I can be of support with anything, happy to help. Sure, thank you so much and thanks a lot for joining. Thank you as well, very grateful you're doing this uh, and looking forward to the next ones. Bye. 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 How, uh, how I, I, I'm not, uh, let me stop recording. This.